Hey everybody, it's Pokey. Um, it's super late, but I can't sleep. Uh, I just recorded a video that I'm probably actually going to delete and not post ever because I just needed to rant about something not related to this video, but just something that I need to get out of my system. Um, I am going to read something to you. It's a post from Facebook. It's a, a woman's soul is, is from what it was uh, posted on in Facebook. And then I will talk to it after. Um, the inability to receive support from others is a trauma response. Your I don't need anyone. I'll just do it all myself. Conditioning is a survival tactic and you need it to shield Shield your heart from abuse, neglect, betrayal, and disappointment from those who could not or would not be there for you. From the parent who was absent and abandoned you by choice, or the parent who was never home from working three jobs to feed and house you. From the lovers who offered sexual intimacy, but never offered a safe haven that honored your heart. From the friendships and family who always took more than they ever gave. From all the situations when someone told you, we're in this together, or I got you then abandoned you, leaving you to pick up the pieces when uh, stuff hit uh, got real, leaving you to handle your part and their part too. From all the lies and all the betrayals, you learned along the way that you just couldn't really trust people or that you could trust people, but only up to a certain point. Extreme independence is a trust issue. You learn. If I don't put myself in a situation where I rely on someone, I won't have to be disappointed when they don't show up for me or when they drop the ball because they will always drop the ball eventually, right? You may even have been intentionally taught this protection strategy by generations of her ancestors who came before you. Extreme independence is a preemptive strike against heartbreak. So you trust anyone and you don't trust yourself either to choose people. To trust is to hope, and to trust is to be vulnerable. Never again, you vow. But no matter how you dress it up and display it proudly to make it seem like this level of independence is what you always wanted to be, in truth, it's your wounded, scarred, broken heart behind a protective brick wall. Impenetrable. Nothing gets in. No hurt gets in, but no love gets in either. Fortresses and armor are for those in battle, or who believe the battle is coming. It's a trauma response. The good news is trauma that is acknowledged as trauma that can be healed. You are worthy of having support. You are worthy of having true partnership. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of having your heart held. You are worthy to be adored. You are worthy to be cherished. You are worthy to have someone say, you rest, I got this. And actually deliver on that promise. You are worthy to receive you are worthy to receive. You are worthy. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to prove it. You don't have to bargain for it. You don't have to beg for it. You are worthy. Worthy. Simply because you exist. That hits deep. I won't go into why I obviously understand the trauma part, because if you've seen any of my videos before, you understand a lot about my past. I haven't said everything with it. Um, there are some stories that I will never tell. There are some stories that I can't even begin to find the words for. There's some stories that I've forgotten some of the details because it has literally been too much for me to handle. Because if I try to focus on those details, I literally go insane. I literally have no concept of, of coherent thought because that's how bad it was. I have spoken out a lot about my past and my trauma and things I've gone through. I've spoken out a lot about things that happened with Alan. One of the things that I, I realized while trying to parent and teach Alan and get him through his trauma and help him heal from his trauma, I've realized how incredibly independent I am. 
because there's there are some things that I thought that he should be able to be able to do on his own, and he can't because I've done it all. Mommy has done it all, so why should he have to? And I, I had to take a step back. I had to realize that my kid has become very dependent on me to do certain things in the house, certain chores or certain activities that he should be able to do on his own. And trying to get him to do it now is like pulling teeth, literally. Um, and my kid is super sensitive of a lot of things. But um, I had to take a step back. I had to be like, wow, I... I'm very incredibly independent because I'm so used to doing things on my own. I'm so used to reacting that way that that hits deep because it's my reaction to trauma. I've always been very independent. I've always had to do things on my own. Um, I've always had to protect myself because because I'm one of those people that even after bad things have happened to me, I still, I still believe in hope. I still believe in love. Like no matter how many times my heart has been broken by a man, I still fully believe in love. I still fully believe in working for it, believing in it. And there have been people in the past who have, who have called me a fool for that. And I'd say that, I don't care though. I I can't give up on this. No matter how many times I've been hurt by it. Yeah, I've been through a painful divorce. I was married for almost five years. I had been with him for almost seven years at that point. But am I going to tell people that marriage is worthless or that love is worthless? No, I'm not going to because I still believe wholeheartedly in it. Just because I suffered terrible divorce and, and a terrible relationship in general, very, very toxic, abusive relationship doesn't mean that in and of itself, love and marriage isn't worth it. Like that, I'm the kind of person that still believes in it, still believes in, in, in making an effort for it. I'm not going to tell someone who's about to get married, like, don't do it, you know, this is what's going to happen because it's not my story. That's their story. Their story is still being written I can't tell them that their story is going to end up exactly like mine. I could give them advice about how to spot toxic, you know, um, red flag, you know, red flags of toxicity in a relationship because I've experienced it. So I, so if someone was concerned and thought like, well, is this a red flag? I could tell them like, yeah, that, that definitely is a red flag. But if you really want to know, go talk to professional like, Go find someone like a counselor or something like that who can tell you if this is red flag for you. But I can't just say that because my situation ended up like that, that yours will. But I, I do think that I was foolish in the past for one particular reason when it came to relationships. That no matter how many times I got hurt, I still kept trying to give love a chance. And my mistake was attempting to do so without fully accepting my own issues, my own trauma, without fully accepting and acknowledging that I was still broken inside, that I hadn't healed myself for myself. I kept pursuing love while thinking I was whole and I wasn't. I wasn't whole yet. I'm more whole now than I was before. I was fairly broken up before. I was fairly destroyed before in pieces. What the heck? Okay. Sorry, my hair was... <laughs> um, I, I kept getting into relationships when I wasn't fully me. And I wasn't fully me for me. I kept thinking that I was going to become whole for someone else. And that's the worst thing that you could possibly do. No one else is going to make you whole as a person. Like you have to make yourself whole. That's, that's something I have had to learn the hard way. And it took a couple decades. <laughs> um, like I'm, I'm going to be 35 
in a week and a half. And some people still don't believe that that's my age, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, whatever. But uh, yeah, it's, I had to be whole for myself. I had to find myself and heal myself. Um, because in doing so, I would better understand myself and what I really needed versus what I wanted. Um, because I also was pursuing the relationship goal that has been presented to me by, well, society and by family and friends where their relationship is not my relationship. Like that, what they have is not going to work for me perfectly because that's for them. That's not my story. Um, but I didn't quite realize what I needed versus what I wanted because I wasn't whole. I wasn't fully myself for myself. I, I kept doing it for others. I never did it for myself. So that was the mistake that I made. Um, unfortunately, during all those trial and errors, yes, I may have become more of a full person, a whole person for myself, but I lost the ability to trust along the way. I lost the ability to trust myself to, to, to find that, that person, to, to be able to let that person in. I lost my ability to trust others to have my back. I became so independent that it's not that I wouldn't ask for help, but like, I don't, I don't care. I have no shame. I have no pride when it comes to asking for help. If I'm in a dire situation, um, I've asked for help from people before, but that's not the kind of independence I'm talking about. The kind of independence I'm talking about is protecting myself from that, that extra layer of hurt things that I've experienced before and never want to again. I say this now because I, I have been very busy. Yes, I really have been very busy. I didn't lie about that when, when friends were talking about, like, I've been spoken to you a while, or there are people that I've been talking to for almost every single day, and all of a sudden I'm just not talking to them for like a couple weeks at a time. And I really have been busy, but there were times or were moments that maybe I could have said something, but I didn't because I was super depressed. I was, I was struggling in those moments to find a voice at all because I, I was hurting extremely and I was spiraling inward and I didn't know how to get myself out. So those moments that I might've been able to say something, I was taking those moments for myself to try to get myself to, to even feel the desire to continue. And that's, that's a scary thought. And it's not like I was suicidal so much as it was, it was exhaustion. It was emotional, mental exhaustion. I mean, physically, I've been exhausted. Um, just because I'm always constantly on the move right now, especially right now. Um, so much going on and I'm trying to just, I'm trying to get my life on track. I'm trying to, to declutter my house and my life. I'm trying to just kind of declutter in general, but I've been so exhausted and super depressed. So those times when I might have been able to find a moment to, to say something to someone, I chose that moment for myself instead. And the people that I haven't been talking to as much, I've said I'm sorry because I'm used to apologizing. Sorry, my nose is super runny. Um, But they told me, don't apologize. I understand. I I get where you're coming from. I've been there. Sometimes I'm still there, so don't apologize. 
that's just kind of my, unfortunately, that's my conditioning is apologizing even if there's nothing to apologize for. That's literally how I've been conditioned to be from all the abuse I've taken since I was a child is to apologize, to blame myself, even if I didn't do anything wrong. But that has been my struggle for the last few months. And the other part of that that hit me deep was saying that I am worthy of all those things I'm trying to protect myself from. I don't, I shouldn't have to explain myself. I shouldn't have to, to push myself so hard that I, I, I do deserve, I am worthy of that love and that trust, not just from someone else, but for myself. But my brain, my heart is not in a cohesive uh, unit of of uh, teamwork right now. It's just, it's not working in tandem right now. It's Right now, it's kind of reacting badly when I try to think along those lines, even, even thinking that I could be worthy of something like that, even thinking that, hey, maybe you could trust someone else. Maybe you can trust yourself to, to know the difference now between something that's toxic and not toxic because you have lived that. So you should be able to, to recognize it, right? Unfortunately not because... Because in the past, I've wanted so badly for things to work out finally that I didn't realize that I've missed a lot of the red flags. So I was, I was in pursuit of something, something I wanted so, so much that I, I was willing to ignore the red flags. So I, I've literally become, I've really, literally come to the point where. I cannot trust myself. I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid that if I trust myself to to reach out, then I will make the same mistake again. <sighs> I've also been depressed and kind of sad because I took a leap of faith recently. I had fallen in love with my best friend and I let him know. And he rejected me in the way that he he's not he does not see commitment in the same way that I do. For him, he's very open and very free. And he enjoys the life that he has now. That doesn't mean that he doesn't love me. We've talked exclusively, extensively about our feelings for each other and how much we enjoy and love being best friends with each other. And, and how this isn't something that I wanted right away. It's something that I wanted to work towards with him. But could be like five years from now, you know? It's not something that I'm just like, hey, let's date and let's have you move here and let's do this thing. No, it was, uh, I want this to be known that this is something that I'd like to work towards with you. And hopefully we can get there. He said that there, who knows, something may happen in five years. Who knows, maybe he might change his mind. I'm not saying that I don't have faith in him, more of a, I have no way of knowing what the next five years are going to bring, but I have a feeling that it, it might not change that much because, well, I'd be asking him to go out of his comfort zone and be willing to go down a, a path with me and with the boys because we are a package deal. And that's, not something he may be ready for, for a long time, if ever. And the reason why my heart broke so much with this because I went out of my comfort zone by attempting trust, attempting faith, the leap of, really. 
I was terrified the entire time. But I, I wanted to try. And... I realized during this that he and I will always be best friends in some way. Even if we don't talk every day, like there's, there's this connection between us, you know, but in the end, I'm going to need something more solid. It may not be right away. Like, as I told him, I really do feel that it would be something to build up to like in two, three, five years. Like I'm really thinking more along five years time. Um, but I am going to eventually need something more solid, something more committed, because I am going to want someone to be that father to my kids, that spouse to me. I am going to want to, to have someone that's going to want to put family first, that's going to want to put the kids first, even before myself, because that's how I am. Like, I'm always going to put my kids first. When I... When I need someone in my life who's going to understand that, that I want them to put my kids first before me. That yes, I would like some attention every once in a while, but my kids will come first because I'm going to put them first. Someone to understand that life is going to get busy and hectic and I may be away or they may be away for long periods of time because who knows, you know, like their job or my job, may require that. Um, I am no stranger to having to move a lot. I'm no stranger to having to travel a lot. I mean, I had to deal with that even before the Navy and then I dealt with that during my, my years in the Navy. So I mean, like I, I'm no stranger to that. So it's not like I'm expecting them to be home every single day if, if work has to take them away. Um, I get that. So it's not like I'm, I'm going to be super strict about something like that, but I do want them to be consistently present as far as communicating and even if you're not there in person, FaceTime, a phone call, a text, something, you know, with the kids, with me, just to be like, hey, you know, love you and, and just missing you or whatever. Hey, I won't be able to talk to you for another day or two, but, you know, I'm thinking of you, you know, consistently, consistent but there's going to have to be that level of commitment that says that, hey, you are a priority to me. And it's just you. Um, because this person is about open relationships. I'm not against um, poly relationships. I'm not against that if, because the foundation of it is communication and consent. Like, we are all consenting to this, that we are in these open relationships. I mean, that's a very broad term and I know that may not be the most correct term now for it, but that's how I am able to describe it is open relationship. And again, I'm not against that. If, Cause I mean, the whole premise of that is consent and knowledge, like communication that, hey, I am in open relationships with these other people. I'm not committed to a single one, you know, monogamous. Um, not against that, but I am more of a monogamous person where I'm just that one. Um, I don't know that I could ever fully change from that. And that may change. I mean, me saying this statement now, it could change in another year, five years. It, you know, it, my views could change, but as of now, I am of a singular mind, a monogamous mind. Um, because to me, I feel it needs to be focused, centered, because it's not just me, it's my children. I don't, me personally, I don't feel like it would be a good example, a, a good nucleus of a family if I am here or there. Now, if that works for people who have kids, kudos to you. That's awesome. That's not necessarily my preference or how I feel about it. I'm not trying to down or judge anyone else who, who has kids who may be in 
poly relationships. Like that's, you can make it work if that's how you feel, if that's, if that's what your kids are around and they're okay with that, or you're okay with that, whatever. Like that's, that's you, you do you. I'm not trying to judge you. I'm just trying to say that that's not particularly me and it may not work for me. And I don't particularly feel like it would work with my kids. Like they need structure, especially Alan, who is all over the place with his, with his mental health issues, uh, with his ADHD, like me with my mental health issues. I need structure. He needs structure. Connor hasn't shown, I mean, he's only three, so he hasn't really shown that he may have, you know, ADHD or anything like that as well. Um, but I mean, who knows? He may or may not show something like that in the future. But uh, in general, my family needs structure and stability. It needs kind of something singularly focused. Um, I I can't I can't pull myself in a lot of different directions. That's that's not how I am. I I need something to focus on because otherwise I pull apart at the seams. Um, as I said, my view may change the future, but as of now, that's where I'm at. And my heart breaks a bit because I feel, at least now, that I may not change in that way. And in that regard, I may not be compatible with this person because they they may prefer that lifestyle and want to continue that lifestyle. And my lifestyle may not be what they want or what they need in their life. Um, and that's the thing too, is that I'm, I've gotten to the point where I'm so independent that I'm kind of stuck where I'm at in this way. And it's not that I'm unwilling to compromise or try new things. It's that this has worked for me and has worked for my children. So I'm trying not to deviate too much from it. But it also means that I would have to let go of the idea of a future with this person. After I've put myself through so much to open up and be vulnerable and trust and hope and that hurts because, as I said, how many times have I done this and still been broken, but I, I want to believe in love. And it's being super depressed these last few months and thinking that Damn, this, may, this may be the end for me as far as wanting that again in the future because it has been three years since my divorce was finalized it has been almost three years since um, my last relationship ended, which was when it was long distance to begin with and short lived. Um, just crash and burn real quick. Um, so it's not like I got to see him in person again, but we, we started dating uh, from long distance, but we known each other for like 16, 17 something years. So, I mean, you know, from high school. So, I mean, like, it wasn't like a, like a, oh, met online. Or the, no, no, we knew each other from before. We were, we were close from before. So it's just finally me giving him a shot back then. But so it's been almost three years since that. So then falling in love um, with my best friend that I've known for as long, almost, as that other person. So it's not like this was a sudden thing. This has been accumulation over the years. It's not like I was rushing into stuff right after my divorce like I did with the other guy. I kind of rushed things with him and another person. Or at least I tried. I didn't actually date the other person before. But um, this was a accumulation over the years. This was a buildup. Also a buildup of stealing my nerves 
to try to work towards this because as much as I talked about love and ever again and, and all this angst in the past and this drama, it doesn't compare to the actual feelings of love and actually going for it. You know, that's, that's entirely talking about it. So it's not compared to actually trying to act on it, which I finally tried to act on it and <laughs> kind of crashed and burned with it. Um, but when I first saw that post, I started crying because because I don't I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know that I could have hope in the future. <laughs> For myself at least as I said I believe fully in love I believe fully in in trust and hope and honesty and and integrity and and trying to build something out of that and trying to work for it and continue to work for it um but me actually trying again me feeling worthy of that this compounding with all of my depression the last few months has just kind of destroyed me on the inside and not knowing how to move forward from that not knowing what the next step could be because it's me losing faith in the idea that that I'll actually get that happy ending. And it doesn't mean that that it'll never happen. I don't know the future. But it's in this moment not knowing if I will actually give it a shot in the future. Because it seems to me that I'm always the one who's making the move, who's doing the initiative. <laughs> um, that isn't to say that people haven't like flirted with me or asked me out or anything. Um, not so much in the last couple of years, but uh, I'm always the one taking the initiative. I'm always the one who's putting myself out there and kind of makes me sad because it makes me feel like I'm not worth the effort. Even if me as a person feels that I am worthy of it, I am worthy of love, I am worthy of, of someone taking the initiative, but no one has. So it does kind of put a damper, you know, on my, my feelings, my emotions. And kind of... I don't <laughs> kind of lowers my self-esteem all over again, which is something that I constantly battle. Even when I seem happy, I'm constantly battling that. And I don't always post about it. Um, I've definitely posted about it in the past. I've definitely brought it to the attention of others and tried to promote um, seeking help for that kind of stuff. Definitely talk to professional. Like I'm not a professional, so don't take everything that I say at like, oh, this is this is what worked for her, so that's what I should. No, 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 don't. <laughs> I'm not a professional. Speak to an actual professional, okay? Um, excuse me. Um, but It has definitely been a struggle the last few months, and I wanted to be open about that. I wanted to talk to people about it because it's something that's real and constantly there. Um, I said it before, I will always say it, that this isn't something that just goes away with like one counseling session or even a year of it. This is something that stays with you when you've gone through trauma, when you've gone through something that it just... It stays with you, is there with you the rest of your life. Um, 
I'm constantly working on it. I'm constantly revisiting it. And that is something that hopefully Alan sees and starts to mimic that it's something that you will constantly be working on. So get used to it. Don't try to give up, you know, try to keep working on it because it's, it's going to be with you anyway. So you might as well work with it, you know, instead of trying to work against it. Um, I'm hoping that my example is a positive one for him because his trauma is always going to be with him. His ADHD is always going to be with him. So hopefully my example shows him perseverance. You know, it's, it's worth it. It's just it may not seem like it, but it's worth it. And you know what? I've, I've also proven to some people who were like, you know, why don't you just give him drugs? And, and I'm just like, drugs, medication should not be the, the automatic go-to when it comes to something like ADHD. I'm sorry, it shouldn't. That's that's how I feel. If it works for you, if you have ADHD, or if it works for your kids who have it, great. That's If that's what works for you, if that's what is helping awesome but that i don't that's not my automatic go to i don't think it should be for anyone um and you know what even though we're we're slowly making progress and it's not like perfect in the last year he's gone f- from nightmares almost every single night to maybe two or three nightmares in a month maybe for the past like 6 8 Six to eight weeks, he's had maybe two nightmares. That is so awesome, you guys. You have no idea. Like, it isn't just me that has nightmares from my trauma. Like, my kid has had nightmares constantly for years. That's something that I haven't talked a lot about, but have mentioned here or there. But it is constant. It's been constant. Like, my poor kid has been having nightmares all the time with therapy. The last year, he's been, like, very few nightmares. It's been, it's been so awesome, <laughs> you know. It's been so awesome that I haven't had to be woken up or gone straight to his room to help him from a nightmare, that he's been able to sleep more throughout the night. It's been so amazing, you guys. Um, so, I mean, that's, I'm proving that is helping him he doesn't have to have medication at least for now but still this has been almost a waking nightmare in a lot of ways um so if if i haven't been talking as much if i haven't been reaching out as much it's because this is this is what I've been dealing with. It's It's been a lot of depression. It's been fighting it every second of the day. Um, I've had a lot going on. I've had a lot of changes in my life. I'm, as I said, trying to declutter my house, but also declutter my life. And that whole thing with the love thing, that, is, that has been definitely a struggle. Um, I will say that I have finally, <laughs> finally, found the right beginning to my bigger series novel that, you know, I started my goddess chronicles that I, I have had multiple different beginnings that I wanted to try. And I finally found the one that works best for the story. So I'm in the middle of my third chapter. Um, I've written random chapters and random sequences and, and scenes over the years, but I've struggled to find the right beginning so that I can, have continuity but I finally found it so I'm in the middle of my third um chapter and uh I'm at see I'm at like 7,000 word count right now I think um don't remember exactly I had like a couple chapters maybe before so with my, in the middle of my third chapter, plus whatever I had before, um, that I will lead up to in, in my new 
rewriting uh, is 14,000 words. To, but out of that, maybe like 7,000 of it is the previous stuff that I had in my document. So I've added like 7,000 words. Maybe, no, probably more actually because I I wrote like almost 4,000 in a day a couple weeks ago. Um, I've added it since I've been very busy with work and other things, so I haven't been able to write as much. So I guess that's some good news, even though I've been severely depressed, is that I finally found the actual opening to my book that I really wanted to, to, I just, I finally found it. So now I can, now I can move forward. Now I can really move forward and really write the meat of, of my book. And then I can go back and, and put more detail and research into everything to make it more authentic to the story I want to tell. But, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Uh, I do want to still try traditional publishing. I don't want to do like a Kindle thing with this because this, for my semi, but not quite long enough for a short story, um, or even a novelette really, uh, Clara and the Rat King, well, I don't mind doing something like that or a book of poetry on Kindle or whatever. Like, I don't mind that. But for the solid, like, fantasy novel, like the really long, like, fantasy novel, I say really long, but really I don't want it to be too long. I'm hoping for at least 80K words. Like, I'm hoping for something along those lines. It's going to, like, I want to have it like a solid, like, fantasy novel. At least 80 to 90K I want for my first one. Um... It's, it's a big story. It, that's why it's meant to be a series. But uh, but I want to do traditional publishing with that. Um, I don't think that I would become as awesomely popular as like Rowling or Sarah J. Moss or, you know, like I, I don't think I could get really that far, but it would be nice. I do want to at least try the traditional publishing, but at least now I have a solid beginning that I can start from so I can move past that. So I added maybe like, I want to say like five or 600 words today, um, little moments in between work on my computer. So I was able to kind of add that. So I try to do at least 600 words a day. I try. Um, yesterday I only had like 200, but eh, you know, so it's, uh, so I guess that's the good part of the last few months, but yeah, I just, I don't owe anyone any sort of explanation. I don't owe anyone like these kinds of videos or posts. I don't like, this is for me. Um, if there are people who get some sort of benefit out of some of the information I'm giving, if I'm like saying, Hey, if you've been through this situation, this is what I did. But mostly I, first and foremost, seek a professional if you need help. Um, but if there's someone who benefits from these videos, great. But I am doing these videos for me, you know? So, sorry, I feel like I have some sort of like almost heartburn feel. Um, I've been dealing with a lot of allergies, which really suck. Um, I also got super sick during all of March. I had to be tested for COVID again because that's how sick I was. Um, and I got a really horrible stomach bug recently. The whole family was sick with that. Um, so that was that was a big deal, was being very sick. And then allergy season, yay, spring. Um, but I've just been dealing with straight up emotional, like mental, like just exhaustion, um, compounded with a lot of issues dealing with the school, with work, with just so much going on. Um, but I just felt like it was finally time to just kind of talk about it openly. Um, I feel like it's, it's good to talk openly about this because, well, people are talking about it. Um, and that needs to happen. People need to discuss this openly because then we can find solutions together for it. And also we can 
come together more as a community because a lot more people are dealing with this than than you'd think with mental health issues or or with you know family dynamics or struggling to get to that point of of trust and hope when you've gone through something that makes you not want to trust or hope i i don't know what's going to happen in the future um I don't have any specific message for hope or positivity. I really don't. Um, I have no idea what's going to happen. I have no idea if tomorrow will be better or worse. I am definitely trying to survive, but I'm also trying to... I'm trying to convince myself that I am worthy. And unfortunately, that is a battle that I'm always going to be fighting. That is a battle that a lot of people are always going to be fighting is that struggle to convince yourself that you are worthy of anything, especially when you've been conditioned to feel that you could never be worthy, especially when you have gone through so much where you are always the one who's initiating and no one's initiating with you. Um, no one else is making that effort to move forward or to fight for it like you are. I say that with confidence because that has literally been happening. Um, because in a lot of the situations, that other person just gave up. That, doesn't, that isn't to say that I haven't done that in the past. I, I have done that in the past. I'm saying in recent times, like specifically like the last like five years, the last like eight years, 10 years, like I'm talking specifically like this specific time frame um, of relationships, like just before and then of course like during my, my marriage and divorce and then after, like I'm talking specifically about this um, because there have been relationships where in the past I have run away or I'm just like, nope, I'm not doing this. So I'm not saying that I haven't done that ever. I'm just saying that specifically this time frame, I was the only one making effort. I was the only one giving initiative or pushing for something. The only one who wasn't playing games. Um, in the last actual relationship where I was dating the guy, and it was only a month and a half that we were together, long distance, I'm not saying that I didn't play games um, because there was some back and forth between the both of us. We were both to blame in that. But in the end, when I did want to try to work through it, they didn't. They're just like, nope, I'm done because I wasn't what they wanted. I wasn't what they thought I was because they had painted a certain image of me in their head. And I wasn't, they didn't like the reality. They liked the fantasy version of me. They didn't like the reality version of me. And they're like, nope, I'm out. And no matter what I said or did, I was never going to be good enough for them. I was never going to measure up to that fantasy image they had in their head of me. So at that point, it was me willing to try to work and compromise and find a way. And they were like, nope, I'm not doing it. Um, in this case... This guy that I slowly fall in love with. It's not that he doesn't take initiative as far as being there as my best friend or communicating with me. Um, he's just used to being alone. He's just used to being free and, and open. Um... So he'd have to put a little bit more extra effort when it came to me because I'm, I like communicating. I like being present. Um, I have a different style when it comes to relationship than he does. And while we have dated in the past, we were both different people back then. So now we are, we are different people, but I would be, I would be putting 
forth more effort in this than than he would but but not because he wouldn't want to just because he's not used to that um but to me i'm still i'm still taking initiative i'm still putting a foot forward and in these recent times no one else has been putting as much effort into as me and it's definitely made me feel like I'm not worth the effort. That my kids are not worth the effort. I've not exactly had good examples of that. So trying to convince myself that I'm worth the effort. Trying to understand why someone would think my kids are not worth the effort. That's That's been a real struggle right there. Um... I have no way of knowing if that's going to change in the future. It's going to be better, worse. Um, I have no way of knowing if this depression is going to continue. Um, I, it's funny because even though I've become emotional and I could cry easily about stuff, or there are things that could make me cry. Um, God, you, have you seen the recent? Uh, the recent trailer that has some, you know, little little teasers for the Eternals and and showing a bit of the Black Widow trailer, that new Marvel trailer where it has Stan Lee talking in the beginning like that. Oh my goodness, I I have to stop talking about that right now because I'm going to start crying really badly with that. Like I was crying so much. Um, there are things that will make me tear up, but. The total breakdown and sobbing of things. I don't do that often. I let out little tiny bits of emotion. So it doesn't build up too much. But the actual build up and having the breakdown where I'm just sobbing. I'm just completely letting out just everything. I don't do that often. Because I'm constantly go, go, go. So I'm constantly letting out little pieces of my emotions, of, of every struggle, because I'm, I'm trying to not let it build up. But because I'm constantly go, 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 I don't give myself very many moments to actually break down and get everything out. I probably should, but I, I don't. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have a moment to do that. Because I'm, I've been very busy and I'm about to get busier. And it makes me sad when that happens. And I feel like I won't have a chance to actually break down because, because I don't have anyone that can tell me, hey, I've got this. Just let, let go for a little bit. Hey, relax for a day. I can take care of the kids. You don't have to work. I'll bring in some paycheck. You know, like I don't, I don't have that. I don't, there's no one there to alleviate some of that pressure for me. And the sad part is, is I don't know that that will ever happen. Whether it's because I've become so independent that I can't trust someone to do that. Or because in the end, no one's going to want to do that for me. Like, I'm not trying to say that I'm unlovable or that my kids are unlovable or that we don't deserve that. I'm just, in the end, I don't know why that may be. But that's the kind of future that I'm scared for. That I'm scared will happen regardless of how I feel about it. Regardless of any efforts I make. I'm so sad and terrified that... That that's what's going to happen. So I don't... I know that's depressing in and of itself to say this, but I don't have a clear message of hope or, hey, maybe it'll work out in the end because I have no idea and I'm still in that depressed state. 
This isn't a, I've been depressed for months, but I'm okay now thing. No, this is, I am constantly depressed, but I push through it most of the time. I, I'm able to manage it most of the time. And I have been very, it's been very hard. I've been struggling so much in the last few months that it's been very hard to push myself to get through because that's how bad it's been. I've had to take more moments out of the day to say, keep going, keep going. You have to keep going. You have to, to tell myself, you have to get up. You have to do this. You, you can't, you can't freeze right now. You can't, you can't block everything out right now. You, you can't tune it out. You're, you feel that panic rising. You feel your anxiety coming through and it's about to destroy you. It's about to engulf you. You, don't let it. You have to push through it. I have to take, I've had to take more moments to push myself, to mentally tell myself, keep going, keep going, keep going, because it's been especially hard. And because I'm still in the middle of that, I have no idea what the, the future will bring. So I don't really have a, a message of hope. I don't really have a message of, of it'll get better because I have no idea. Um, but I, I need to say all this. I need myself to recognize that this is happening and that these fears are real because that's the, that's the other thing with anxiety and depression, because you also have this fear that your fears are unfounded. You have this fear that it's invalidated because you've been conditioned to feel like everything you do is worthless. Everything you do is unfounded. You're just causing drama. You're just you're just being crazy. Nothing you say or do will really matter or count. Everything that you say is just is just an annoyance to someone else. Like this has been constant in my life. This is the conditioning that I've gone through both as a child and teenager and it, like all as a child, teenager and an adult. So, I mean, this is, this is what I struggle against daily, but when you are this deep in the depression and anxiety, one of your biggest fears is that all of your fears are unfounded, that you're just causing nothing but issues for those around you, those that you love, that you're just nothing but a hindrance. So, I, I don't know what it is right now. What I do know is that I can't give any promises. All I can tell you is that I'm going to try, but I, I can't promise anything. Um, I am reaching out for help. I am talking to people. I, I am using the tools at my disposal that I've had at my disposal for years. Um, I'm also being open with my children whenever, I mean, I'm not like unloading specific details of, of my depression, specific details of my, my past trauma to them, but I am letting them know mommy isn't feeling good. Mommy is feeling very sad right now. Uh, it's called depression. I've, I've spoken openly about the term depression with my kids. And yeah, I know people are, there are people out there who would be like, they're only seven and three years old. Like, isn't that too young? Not really, actually. Um, Connor is hella advanced for his age. Daycare, his doctor, his medical doctor, and even Alan's therapist and um, the mental health department that he goes through who have seen Connor and spoken to Connor whenever he's been in tow with us, um, they have all said that he's his vocab is off the charts for three years old. He's speaking in clear, concise paragraphs, not just like short sentences, but paragraphs. He's understanding like more advanced terms. Um, he understands depression as it is something that you go through in your mind. It's is a struggle. 
Sometimes you don't feel like doing things. Sometimes you have anxiety. Anxiety, he understands the concept of anxiety, of, of, of fear of things that may or may not happen. And, um, and your body kind of overworks itself and your emotions overwork itself. And so like, that's how I've described it to him and described it to him in very simplistic terms. He understands the concept of this though, if not the exact, you know, like terminology or not the exact, like, um, like higher vocab words. Um, but I, I've, I've tried to give a simplistic meaning to it. So he understands that when mommy says that she is just, struggling because of her depression he knows that oh mommy is hurting inside she's upset inside her emotions are kind of all over the place she's feeling exhausted um she may not have the energy so when she tells me that her brain is hurting and that she's she's very sad or she's struggling right now that oh, okay mommy's going through this um i've been very open with that with my kids and that is also showing Alan an example of being open with his mental illnesses. Um, it has actually promoted him to be more open with his therapist. And that has helped him. As I said, like we've helped him when it comes to his nightmares. Partially that's because he's become more open. He's He is seeing the example of openly discussing it and not ostracizing it or stigmatizing it. He's, he is seeing me openly express it and say hey this is real i acknowledge it i am trying to heal and i may not always succeed but i'm making that effort and that is a very big deal for a child who has had trauma at a very early age and who still deals with the aftermath so and connor seeing that example is also teaching him to be honest and open with his emotions and not try to hide something and not trying to to deviate and 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 deflect um sometimes connor can be dramatic because well he's three years old he's he's three um but he's very open about it. he speaks openly about his emotions and that is that is huge He's three years old, but he understands that I am having this issue internally. And a lot of children that young, it's very hard for them to, to express their emotions, to express uh, verbally how they're feeling. Connor, if I ask him what's wrong, he will tell me specifically, Mommy, I am sad because you said this and this is how this made me feel. And I don't like that. Can you please not do that? Just give me a full on paragraph of why he was sad, why he started crying. Like, you know, if I tell him, no, you can't do this, he'll be like, he'll he'll get upset. I'll be like, why are you upset? He's like, because you told me that I couldn't do this and I really want to do this. And you said no because of this reason. And I get that, but I don't like it. I know I, I shouldn't, or I know you're telling me that I can't do this, this one thing that I want to do, but I don't like it. Like he's done that. You tell him, no, you can't, um, you can't have this toy because I can't afford it. And he'll be like, but why can't you afford it? I said, because I have to put that money towards something like bills. If I don't pay a bill on electricity, the lights turn off. If I don't pay the, the bill for the mortgage, which is the house payment, if I don't pay for the house, we can't live here. We will, we will be evicted. If I don't pay for this or that, then we don't get that service. If I don't pay for the car, I can't drive the car, which means that I can't get you to daycare, which means I'm stuck. <laughs> you know, like I, I, I explain those things to him. So Connor understands that. So he would say, and this has been recent too, I say, well, I can't afford to get you that toy and you have enough toys. And you say, why can't you get me that toy? Well, because I can't afford it. I don't have the money for it. Why don't you have the money for it? Well, because I have to pay bills. I have to pay this, this, and this. And I explained that to him. He's like, okay, mommy, I know that you can't do that, but I don't like it because I really want that toy. I said, well, you, you don't have to like it, but that's what it is. It'd be like, hmm. you know, he does this cute little, 
hmm thing right now is it's really adorable but um but he he can understand that stuff and he can speak back to you like clear as day and he's very polite apparently at daycare they told me that he's very polite he says please thank you and you're welcome constantly and can i please and blah 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 like you know he does the manners thing very well and he speaks clearly and he says miss so and so miss so and so can i please blah 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 okay thank you or no thank you i don't want this or no thank you i would rather do this i want to do this instead he uses the word instead like i want to do this instead because that i like this more he said that in a complete sentence he said those exact words before that's a direct quote no thank you i don't want to do this insert activity because i want to do this more uh, i like this more i want to do this instead you know so like he's so i mean like he he's understood things clearly and i like to think it's partially because he's seen the example of speaking openly and clearly about stuff so yeah my youngest is three years old but even if he's three years old i am openly discussing things maybe in a very sim simplistic way because of his age group um but he's able to understand it so that's not too young that's not like crazy that that i'm speaking openly about this stuff in front of my three-year-old because it's it's not just helping my seven-year-old it's helping my three-year-old understand and you know build an understanding for those concepts um and he's able to communicate more openly too about his emotions about what he's going through so <sighs> I'm openly talking about this. I am practicing what I preach with my children. Um, as I said, I don't know where this is going to go after this, but but I need I need this to be open. I need this to be out there for myself. I need to acknowledge that I have been severely depressed and I have been struggling and I do have the hope that it will get better but i i actually don't know and i know that i've spoken about this before but i don't want to put too much emphasis on too much positivity or too much negativity like the whole positive like it will get better or this is how it's gonna happen i don't i don't want to put too much on the positive or the negative i want to accept it as it happens and react and act accordingly so that's kind of what i'm trying to do i haven't always succeeded in the past but i'm trying to do it better right now moving forward is that i would like it to get better i would like to have a more stable kind of environment in general both outward and inward for myself. Um, I would like to hope that I can, if it doesn't actually work with the person I'm currently in love with, then I would like to, I would like to hope that I can get to that part when it comes to trust with that other person, whoever that may be in the future, but I don't know. So I'm going to do the best that I can. Um, definitely seek help. Continue to seek help, that is. I mean, if you are going through that too, please seek help. Please, please do. Um, I, I'm going to put the, um, the National Suicide Hotline in the comment section because, um, as I said, like I'm, it's not that I was suicidal during this. It's just the struggle to keep moving forward because I'm just so exhausted and it does get exhausting like there are people who there are people in the world who can't understand why someone might be suicidal or might just give up if this has been a constant struggle and a constant battle and you're just go 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 and you don't have 
any time to rest and you don't have a support system that understands that you need that rest, you need that recharge because you are just, is a constant struggle, is a constant fight. You can get to that point where you're just like, enough is enough. I can't do anymore. I can't. And so because I've been so far down, I've gotten to that point of suicidal ideation and no attempts since I was a teenager, but an attempts when I was a teenager that even if I have not had specifically suicidal thoughts during this depression, this, this further depression than my usual depression, um, that, that doesn't mean that it can't go in that direction. So, I mean, I, that's why I'm, continuously and currently seeking help but I'm going to put that in the comments because I I feel it's important if you are feeling like this and you think that you could go that far down please reach out so that's that's why I'm putting it in the comment section because it's it's very important and it I people need that resource so again I I haven't been feeling that specifically like suicidal thoughts but I have been struggling with the pushing myself to move forward or just even just do something because I've been so exhausted. So if you feel like that could morph into something like that, then please seek help. So that's in the comments below. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try for sleep. I haven't been able to sleep. Saying the word sleep and I yawn. <laughs> Go figure. Um, but I just, this need to be said, this need to be put out there. Um, I'm going to try. I, I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to sleep. I don't even know if I'm really going to, I think what I'm going to do is try to post this tomorrow versus right now because it's well after midnight. It's actually almost 1 a.m. So yeah. I have to be up in a few hours, physically up in a few hours to get kids to daycare and all that. But I, uh, yeah, I think I'll post this tomorrow. <laughs> Split, like straight up decision on the moment, the, the impulsive decision making. <laughs> uh, you've seen it first, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I do hope that if you are struggling if you're kind of in a rut or if you are going through something really really dark right now I, I hope that you can reach out um to someone not everyone has a resource not everyone has someone they can talk to um I don't know maybe by some some miracle this video has actually made you feel better that you aren't alone but uh if you are if you are struggling, please, please seek help. Uh, please try to talk to someone, even if it's, even if you can't get to a professional, but you can get to a best friend or family member, try, please do. Um, it's very important. Okay, I'm going to try. No guarantees I'll actually sleep. This may be one of my, my days where I just don't sleep at all. And I, I push through work. Um, I don't know, but uh, stay safe, guys. Um, hopefully, I'll see you in another video. I had another video I was going to upload, but I don't know if I will because I think this one's more important. <laughs> and I might just put in that video that, hey, I recorded this like two weeks ago, but this is, I meant to post it, but I didn't. Um, all right, without further ado, I will attempt to sleep. May or may not succeed, and hopefully I can do another video after this. Um, try not to give up. It's hard. It's hard. So hard trying to keep going when you just want to just stop because it's so much effort, but try not to give up.
don't know what's going to happen with this, but try not to give up, okay? I'm going to keep trying, but I, I don't know, as I said, what's going to happen. But, yeah. All right. Bye. <laughs>